Folks, it is time to go over a few things which I think you will find very interesting if you like to know the way a half Persian comedian's mind works, then you're in for a treat. First, I am on the set of a movie and it is going fantastically. The movie's a comedy, it's a romantic comedy. If you've always wanted to see me as a leading man, well, <laughs> Here's your chance. And co-stars, very nice, very famous. You will recognize them and go, whoa. So that'll be cool and it comes out Thanksgiving. Don't ask me, can you put it out early? It's a Thanksgiving movie. There's Thanksgiving scenes. My Iranian family doesn't say thank. They can't say thank. The H disappears. Thank God becomes thanks God. So they will say, you are in Thanksgiving movie? This is great, thanks God you got into Thanksgiving movie. I have decided that America is racist because they have never had a half Persian president yet. And until I see myself on TV, in the Oval Office, elected by the people as an American half Persian president, I do not think it's possible. And I will know it's possible once I see that because then it will be me. Was that good for hyphenates? Do I sound like a leftist? Perfect. Speaking of leftism, it is now time to dissect the siege on the Capitol building. I want that to be my next movie. Wouldn't it be cool if a half Persian saved the day? The siege of the Capitol building. Now let me break it down because many people have asked. I get a lot of little hey nanny nannies coming in there. Hey nanny nanny boo boos. They come and say, oh, bet you wish you didn't support Donald Trump in the last election now. Well, let me tell you this. 74 million voters did. That's more than ever voted for Barack Obama. Also, 74 million people did not go to the Capitol building. I was on the set of a movie. Y'all tripping. You think I was in DC and over here too? Uh-uh. I was getting my lip gloss on for the kissing scene. Second of all, 300,000 people were at the march. Maybe, you know, they call it a million man march. Uh, you know how men are, they always over exaggerate. Yeah, and I've got a 10 intro. The point being, let's say that million man march, right down to 30% of that, 300,000 people marched. How many people went into the Capitol building? Can we say about 300? I'll give you that. What percent, and I want my mathematical geniuses on all three platforms to tell me, what percent of 74 million is 300. You do the math, I wanna read it in the comments. Do 300 people out of 74 million, and you tell me what that is. That will tell us what percentage of people thought it was a good idea to break into a government building. Now, if you've seen any of my videos, you know I support law enforcement. I have never broken into a government building and gotten caught. <laughs> I don't support breaking into government buildings and hurting law enforcement, and I bet 99.999% of those 74 million do not either. But then my little mind starts working. New York Times reported that those pipe bombs that were not able to explode, more like a prop. <laughs> Who would know about props? Movie guy. Those were set hours before Trump's speech even began. Dun dun dun! Plot twist. So, you set a few pipe bombs that are not meant to explode hours before it began. While Trump's speech was going on, there were already aggressive people congregating at the Capitol. If you're a Trump fan, wouldn't you be at the fun speech? Or would you already be making trouble at the Capitol? Could it be these people weren't exactly the biggest Trump fans in the world? These were mischievous people. I don't know. I'm asking the question, you be the judge. I saw a video of police opening barricades that were otherwise ready to go to allow hundreds of people in. Police are squabbling with protesters. Oh, there we go. And they just breached the Capitol. You can clearly see a police officer open the gate for the protesters. It appears the cops are literally escorting them in, while on the other side of the building, they were pretending to hold them back. Why would the police open a barricade and allow aggressive people in? Maybe it was a setup. Also, the DC mayor asked for no extra police on that day. Hmm, getting tricky. I saw a video of a guy breaking into the Capitol and Trump supporters stopping the guy on tape. The guy didn't look like a typical Trump supporter. I now want to talk about the Boston Tea Party. You're going, Kayvon, 
How are we going from the Capitol to the Boston Tea Party hundreds of years ago? I want to see who paid attention in history class. The problem with social media is most of you are idiots. I don't know who's who. So we will just ask who knows about the Boston Tea Party and you can reveal for yourself who is who. The Boston Tea Party was known for a bunch of people dressing like who? What? Say it loud for the kids in the back who didn't study. The Boston Tea Party dressed up in what they felt was a typical costume to go and do their mayhem. Then that other people that were not there would get the blame. I don't see a lot of answers, so maybe you guys were in the back too. So here we have 300 aggressive people that were not at Trump's speech, starting trouble at Congress, breaking in. Few Trump supporters stopped them. And uh, of course, some got in, as we can see from the videos. And uh, I can imagine if you're charged up and you're with, maybe you're just a regular Trump supporter and maybe there's some Antifa people, but they're dressed like the Boston Tea Party version of 2021. All they think they need to do is wear a red, white, and blue hat and then carry a Confederate flag. And now suddenly they have the instant Trump supporter kit provided by a Hollywood wardrobe department. Then they can get in and get a bunch of Instagram photos and boom! That's how you blame 74 million people for the acts of 300. Do I support it? Absolutely not, wasn't there. But as scared as those Congress people were for that six hours, and that must have been tough, fearing for what might come next, do you think any of them thought, wow, this is how the rest of America felt for the last six months? Was AOC under her desk thinking, didn't I send a tweet saying we should be loud and make people uncomfortable? Do you think Maxine Waters had her big old wig underneath that desk and she had to pick all the dust out of it, you know, dust it off on her knee, put it back on, turn it around because it was backwards and then thought to herself, I'm the one that said, start a crowd. You got to go up to people. If you see anybody from that cabinet in a restaurant, in a department store, at a gasoline station, you get out and you create a crowd. Make a circle around them and drive them out of their restaurants. And you push back on them. And you tell them they're not welcome. Maybe she thought for one second this must have been tough in Minnesota and Kenosha, Portland, Seattle, and Los Angeles. And man, I bet this was kind of hard for people in New York City and DC and Las Vegas and Denver to not know what these mobs were doing. I bet the McCloskeys who just went out in their yards like What's going on here? You stay away from my yard, you broke in here. And we took their guns and arrested them and called them the criminals. Maybe we should have allowed people to defend themselves because thank God for the Capitol Police Department. And suddenly, just like that, all the Democrats who supported the mostly peaceful riots of the summer were now mostly safe from the mostly peaceful march on Capitol Hill, but they realized it wasn't so peaceful after all. So what did they do? Step one, they have now erected a fence or wall around the Capitol. Why? Because walls work and they know it. Step two, they've called that little siege a huge problem. They are against rioting and protests that turn violent for the first time all year. Step three, they now have a perfect alibi to not have an inauguration in public, which is important because if you have an inauguration in public for a man who got 84 million votes, AKA Joe Biden, who no one even knows his full name, Joe what? What's his middle name? Anybody, anybody, anybody? Without Googling it, most of you didn't know. Joe R. Biden, who has 84 million fans, can no longer have an inauguration outside because it would look pretty weird when they had those circles and there was 14 people. But watch, just watch, the media will spin it. The media will spin it and say, this is the most watched inauguration of all time because of Zoom and YouTube and Facebook Live. More people are coming together and hugging and watching Joe R. Biden get elected than ever before. And then the news will turn to you and say, now obviously they would have all been sitting outside, but for now they can't due to what happened two weeks ago. You understand, don't you? So I believe that this was exactly what the party in power wanted because this allows them to now say, well, yeah, we had seven months of riots, but you had that one riot too. We're all equal. And I'm not buying it. And now they can also 
put the inauguration underground so that you can't see with your own two eyes that there are no fans there to watch. No one willing to sit in the cold to watch Biden catch a cold. They also know that Biden would not survive seven hours outside of his basement or life support machine. And they can now call anyone a white supremacist if you disagree with them. Racist, bigot, Islamophobic, xenophobic, sexist, white supremacist. If you haven't been called all those things, you haven't lived. The little cherry on top of the whole thing is if they can uh, pin this one small incident on Trump. Forget the seven months of riots, BLM, burn, loot, murder. They can pin this one seven hour incident on Trump and tarnish him enough. They've cut the head off the snake and Trump cannot reemerge in four years. That's the piece de resistance they're hoping for. So that's why I think it's important not to push for impeachment. I read Trump's speech completely and it did say we have to be strong, we have to stand up for what's right, but we have to stay peaceful. I know that everyone here will soon be marching over to the Capitol building to peacefully and patriotically make your voices heard. And Trump clearly said that. That just proves that this is purely a political impeachment. Okay, if you want to impeach Trump, then I want to impeach AOC. Let's impeach. Gavin Newsom should be impeached for going out to dinner when uh, California small businesses are struggling. Let's not forget, let's also impeach Nancy and Maxine just for being ugly. I don't think we do that enough. If I have to see you on my TV and you're gonna look like that, you gotta go. If we can impeach all of them, which would be a lot of people, then you, we could throw Trump in the mix. Let's make a deal. That is my analysis. You can see the coordinated effort from big tech, social media, all the leftists, all the comedians, all the entertainers, all the celebrities, all the politicians. All the single ladies, all the single ladies. Shut down all the other voices. Trump is not allowed on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram anymore. Shut down all the dissent. And now it just kind of looks like, hmm, I guess everyone's going along with this. And that is how you create what I call a WWE production of a protest. Comedians used to be in charge of pointing out controversial things and making fun of the obvious. Comedians used to be the ones to make fun of the people in power. They have not done their job. Now the comedians are in line and we have lost our final voice the ones that speak actual truth to the people in power now they're just another cog in the wheel so if you like my take on things you might want to tell your friends to follow me subscribe i'm on youtube.com slash kvon comedy i just can't help thinking i might lose you and i will be the only one making fun of joe biden in 2021 guaranteed you won't see it on fallon you won't see it on kimmel it's not allowed on ellen and forget it corden won't do it either it's up to you if you want to hear other points of view you better support the only people doing it someone said can you say goodbye in british enjoy the rest of your day i hope you have a great time thank you for watching bye now yay youtube